Hi, thank you for applying for this position. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Um, for starters, what is it about this job that makes you want to work here? Money. Thank you very much. I'll call you later. There are many different ways to assess an individual's personality. One of the most common ways is through an interview. So if an interview, I'm just talking about like a face-to-face -face meeting designed to gain information about a person's personality, current psychological state, or personal history. All of us have to go through interviews throughout our lives. You know, whenever you're applying for a new job, for example. Um, but the one thing you should always keep in mind when you have an interview is that they, they don't need to know more about your qualifications. They don't need to know about your experience. Like, you've already filled out that application or sent in your resume. They have that information. The point of the interview is to just see how you react, see how you respond to these really kind of annoying questions that are seemingly, you know, asked for every single job ever. So just keep that in mind, that it's about your personality. They're trying to figure out, are you emotionally stable? Are you agreeable? Are you, fr you know, friendly? You know, and so on. They just want to learn more about you. Now, some pr interviews are unstructured, and that's more just like a casual conversation. But it seems quite common nowadays to have to go through structured interviews where you're asked that same list of questions that you've heard a hundred times before and it's really kind of frustrating because these questions have no right answer. I've talked a little bit and I've shown you a couple, I've provided you with a couple links to videos uh, regarding some of the problems with interviews. Uh, interviews definitely have massive limitations, massive issues. For example, the interviewer is almost always going to be biased in some way. They're either going to be biased towards you or biased against you. It's very rare that you'll meet an interviewer that is completely unbiased. And this can cause a serious problem. Like if you're trying to get a job but the interviewer is clearly racist against you, you're probably not going to get that job simply because of this person. So because there's a person talking to you, that's why you didn't get the job. And sometimes it can go the other way. Sometimes the interviewer uh, can affect the interviewee. So when you go sit down for a job inter interview, if that person interviewing you makes you feel different ways and makes you act differently than you would otherwise, that can also, you know, ruin the interview. Like maybe you're a guy and your interviewer is, you know, really, really attractive. That can be distracting. Or maybe you're you go to an interviewer and that interviewer is just like this big hulking scary looking person with you know all these massive muscles and tattoos and stuff that can be pretty intimidating and you'll definitely act differently with these kind of interviewers than you would with somebody else a better way to assess personality is through direct observation and that's exactly what it sounds like you just watch people you know you assess behavior through direct surveillance and you rate them typically on various kinds of scales like how how often does this person engage in various kinds of behaviors that's that's a behavioral assessment where you're just recording the frequency of certain kinds of things like how often this person you know opens the door for other people or how often this person says you know thank you when somebody does a kind deed for them or whatever you're just taking record of these kinds of observable behaviors. This might even involve a situational test where the people trying to assess your personality will create an environment that is, you know, going to likely elicit certain kinds of behavior. So it's a real life situation or a simulated one where we're looking, we're going to put you in a specific kind of situation and just see how you react. I, there's many examples I could give, but one of my favorite examples is from the beginning of the first Men in Black movie. If you've never seen Men in Black, you should go check that out. It's a really good movie. But when Will Smith is first recruited, uh, you know, he, f he goes to work for the Men in Black, 
he has to, you know, do a series of tests. Like first he sits in a big egg-shaped chair and he has to fill out a thing, and then he has to go to the shooting range and shoot the bad guys and things like that. What these, what these interviewees didn't realize is that it's really just a personality test. They don't care if you're a good shot. They don't care if you fill out the form well. They just want to see how you're going to react in these kinds of strange situations. And if you've seen the movie, you know that Will Smith clearly is the best candidate based on the way he acts in these tests. But by far the most mainstream, the most you know, objective and you know, popular way to assess personality would be through the use of questionnaires. So now I'm talking about mostly pen and paper, pen and paper measures that consist of a series of questions that are designed to you know, reveal various kinds of personality traits. So just like an IQ test, a personality questionnaire needs to be both reliable and valid. It, it, it needs to measure your personality accurately. The most popular um, personality measurement, personality questionnaire, would be the MMPI-2, or Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. So this is by far the most popular way of assessing personality today. It's going to measure all those big five traits and many of their sub-traits. And the MMPI can be used for many different purposes. Like they've created different kinds of subscales of the MMPI for things like clinical disorders. Like all I'm saying is, for example, if you ever go see a psychiatrist, you might be given a questionnaire that will measure things like your level of hypochondriasis, your level of depression, hysteria, psychopathic deviance, masculinity slash femininity, paranoia, psychasthenia, schizophrenia, mania, and social introversion. So how you score on a test like this would give your clinician, it would give that psychiatrist a bit more insight into what kinds of problems you might be experiencing. And then the last kind of test I wanted to mention are the projective tests. Now the projective tests, they were taken seriously in some parts of the world, they're still taken seriously, but they're not considered to be as legitimate as these more objective kind of personality questionnaires. So projective tests are these psychological tests that use ambiguous or unstructured stimuli to try to you know, assess your personality. So just how you react to these stimuli can tell us more about you. The most popular one, the most well-known one, is the Rorschach inkblot technique, where you're just shown a series of ambiguous ink blots and asked to tell the uh, assessor what is your initial reaction, like what is the first thing you see when you look at this ink blot. And something similar would be the thematic apperception test, or TAT, where now the picture isn't ambiguous, like you can clearly see what's in the picture, but why these things are in the picture, like what's the story behind the picture is not known. So with the thematic apperception test, you need to kind of create a story at, or guess at what's going on here. So here's a few ink blots that I, I made. These aren't the standardized ones. These aren't the ones that you'll see in the actual test. But here's a few ink blots I made. And what you should do, remember, is what is your, just tell me what your initial response is. So when you first look at this ink blot, what does it make you think? So just pause it if you want to have a little bit of time, but you shouldn't really spend that much time. It should be your initial reaction. For most people, I think their initial reaction to this ink blot would be a face. Like it looks like two eyes and a nose. So here's another Rorschach ink blot. What does this one look like? Remember, you shouldn't be spending a lot of time trying to figure it out. Just what is your initial reaction? To me, I'd say it kind of looks like two people praying on opposite sides of some strange al altar. Like there's a guy on the left that's on his knees, and a guy on the right that's on his knees, and between them is some kind of altar of some sort. And then here is one more ink block. So what does this one look like? Now the very first thing that I see when I look at this is two people leaning way back 
holding, you know, up a drink like this and just like taking a drink while leaning back. All right, and then now let's just look at a few of these uh, thematic apperception test images. And these images that you're about to see, they do definitely come from this thematic apperception test. So I didn't make these images. All right, so here's the first one. Just tell me what's going on here. Like, what's the story behind this picture? For this one, it'll probably take you a little bit longer because you have to look at all the different parts of the picture and try to guess at what's going on. Some common responses I've heard about this picture is, you know, the guy died and she's really sad about it. So if that's the first thing you think of, well, that's kind of pessimistic. Maybe you're a little bit of a neurotic individual. It could be that he's simply sleeping and she's just emotional about some other thing. Like maybe she just found out she's pregnant, for example, and she's really happy about it. Or maybe they just had some bad sex, I don't know. And then, here's another card. So, what's going on here? Like, clearly this person coming in the door is looking at something, but what is she looking at? And though a lot of students are hesitant to say this, the most common response that I get is, she just walked in on two people having sex. But one response, one, one response I got was a little troubling, made me a little worried about the student. She said that this person walked in on a murder scene, like there's a dead body right there. Then here's the third card. So what's going on here? Like obviously she's thinking about something, but what is she thinking about and why is she thinking about it? You get a wide range of responses for this one. But the same student who saw a dead body in the previous picture told me that in this one, she's thinking about killing somebody. I, I didn't call the cops on the student, but maybe I should have, because that's a little alarming. You know, every picture that's just death. So that's basically what you're doing. Whether you're doing the Rorschach inkblot technique or the thematic apperception technique, you're just looking for those kinds of themes. Like maybe it's a theme of sexuality, maybe it's a theme of pessimism, maybe it's a theme of violence and death. Whatever that theme is, that's what we're trying to figure out so that we have a better understanding of your personality.